I'm driving the all-electric BMW i4, and it's really quick. <laughs> How quick? That quick. Until recently, automakers earnestly produced electric vehicles that looked like props from the Jetsons, the BMW i3 being Exhibit A. From 20 paces, this Bavarian looks exactly like a 4 Series Grand Coupe, but it's the i4, all electric. It's refreshingly normal right down to the door handles, and the current BMW conviction when it comes to grills, you know how you feel about this. Compared to the gas drinker, the biggest clue is engine air intakes that are filled in for better aerodynamics. There's an M car mindset happening here, especially with this M50 model, the first all electric performance model to come out of Munich. The architecture developed for the 3 and 4 series is flexible. And let's not forget, the 3 series is available as a plug in hybrid for those who fear a purely electric vehicle. But that shouldn't be a problem with i4. Let's talk about range. The EPA rates the rear drive single motor eDrive 40 model at 301 miles. Not bad. I'm driving the more powerful M50 dual motor all wheel drive, and it's 270. That's if it were rolling on 19 inch wheels. This one has the 20 inchers with wider, stickier rubber, so it drops significantly to 227. Why does fun always cost? Buyers have some soul searching to do. I've got to believe the 19s will satisfy all but the most discerning hooligans, and you'll save the cost of the $2,500 high performance package. As tested in mineral white metallic, this one stickers for $70,070 with destination. That's before any federal or state tax incentives. Those can easily lop $7,500 off the price. The dual motor setup on the M50 makes 536 horsepower and 586 pound-feet of instant torque. The rear motor is more powerful than the front. BMW's unique in-house motor design has no rare earth metals. This keeps costs and environmental concerns down and supply chain assurances up. Apparently, engineers have the flexibility to tweak the strength of the rotor's magnetic field. BMW says any cobalt used in the low-profile liquid-cooled 81.5 kilowatt-hour lithium-ion pack is ethically sourced, and the car is manufactured using wind and solar energy to reduce its carbon footprint. The initial experience is completely normal. Other than that sound, replacing pistons firing, while the selector looks like the one in any 4 Series, it's a single-speed transmission built into each of the motors. The optional head-up display is large and clear, don't skip it. The drive modes will look familiar to BMW faithful. M50 has adaptive dampers and self-leveling rear air suspension, so things can be tailored nicely. I'll cover charging later, but I'll point out that BMW has the best port covers in the business. No dangling rubber doohickeys, and the door won't close if they aren't in the proper position. Simple and elegant. It's easy to schedule charging for optimal electric rates and limit the charge level of the pack. Look, you know this is going to be quick. Dual motor, all-wheel drive, all that horsepower, all that instant torque. Zero to 60 easily in three and a half seconds. And because it's an EV, it just feels faster than it is. There's launch control for maximum G-forces. The traction control system is part of the motor management, eliminating the signal paths. BMW says this is 10 times faster than standard systems. <laughs> this thing really moves off the line. And even at highway speeds, plenty of thrust and reserve. This weighs a skosh over 5,000 pounds, a lot more than an M3, but this, this is quicker. So if you're looking for thrust, this is the one to buy. Need to pass a slow moving truck or a Mitsubishi iMeve? There are no turbos to spool up, just instant oomph. It has all the acceleration of an M4, probably quicker and much quieter, so fun romps don't attract nearly as much attention. These make more sound. 
One pedal drive is definitely a thing in the i4. Put it into B mode and it adds substantial drag. This will come to a complete stop. Now, if you leave it in regular drive mode, there's adaptive one pedal drive, meaning it will coast efficiently until sensors see a car ahead and then it adds more regeneration drag. It's all automatic and it works really well. Also, the brake feel, the transition from recuperation to the actual physical disc brakes is very good in this car. For efficiency, the M50 prioritizes rear drive dynamics and it uses the front motor only when your right foot calls for it. Only you can tell if the performance tires are worth the range penalty, but I will say this, it's pretty true to the estimate. I'm seeing about 200 miles on a charge. Uh, now that said, it's a little on the cooler side in the high 40s, and I've been launching this thing hard numerous times. BMW says its motors have an efficiency factor of 93% compared to less than 40% for gas engines, and i4's coefficient of drag is as low as 0.24. At highway speeds, the i4 is pretty darn quiet. You're gonna hear some wind rushing over the body, but nothing much, and it's comfortable. Everything is very controlled, but it remains sporty, a really good blend. Diving deep into the ride quality, the air suspension and adaptive dampers didn't completely eliminate head toss or slight bounding on this undulating section of pavement. You'll see it if you look closely. Might be an issue mid-corner. I'm being very picky here. This is a heavy car and it's tough to tame that dynamic. BMW did a solid job. Remember, batteries in the floor mean a lower center of gravity, and this is wearing the stickier rubber, so it's a joy to toss into a corner. Steering is precise and accurate. The heft of the wheel is nice. Plus, there is road feel coming up through here. Uh, not gobs and gobs, but certainly enough. Put a destination into the navigation system and HAL 9000 finds the quickest overall route and optimum charging strategy. It even suggests restaurants and venues while the car is charging. When you're out here having fun on a twisty turning road, you're gonna wanna put it into sport mode, which triggers a sport sound. That's courtesy of composer Hans Zimmer. Um, you may like it. You may not. In case you're wondering, BMW says the sound can be turned off. The optional driving assistance professional uses three front cameras, a front facing radar, and four side radar sensors for its semi autonomous driving system. It monitors the driver to make sure that they're paying attention. And unlike Super Cruise, it's not totally hands free. It does want your paws on the wheel occasionally. Still, it's quite good and helpful on longer trips. While i4's exterior might look identical to a 4 Series Grand Coupe, the interior is different. For starters, the classic cowled gauge cluster look is replaced by these dual displays that are fused and curved to appear like one, very much like the iX. It should come as no surprise that the material choices are excellent, same with fit and finish. This brace isn't overly elegant, but only the passenger sees it. Door releases have a solid tactile feel. The meaty heated wheel stitched up in M livery is a lovely thing to hold. Some consider competitor Tesla Model 3 a luxury car, I don't know. This is what a premium cabin looks like. There's an excellent camera system and it keeps the i4 ding free. Love car wash mode. The seats will take on pilots of all sizes and keeps them well planted during hard cornering. Very adjustable too. I don't find the heating element very powerful if you like to roast. Very high isn't. The HVAC system is an efficient heat pump, so that helps with range, especially in cold climates. As far as the user interface is concerned, BMW is now up to iDrive 8. It's had some time to refine the system. This is now one of the best in the business. It can be controlled just about every way known to mankind, including gesture controls to turn the volume of the sound system up or down. It's okay, I don't know that I would go for that option, but the casual voice commands are terrific. You use the prompt 
Hey BMW. Over the air updates are a thing and they can be scheduled. To prove my point about the interface, there's the classic iDrive jog wheel and handwriting recognition if you abhor fingerprints on the screen. If you're a hands-on person, the response is second to none. On top of all that, the menu is straightforward. It's deep, but things are easy to find. A cheap pad for charging phones is helpful since using Android Auto and Apple CarPlay wirelessly drains batteries fast. Tesla does have the best charging experience. It's simplified with plug and charge. But these days, combining all the players like ChargePoint, EVgo, Shell Recharge, and Electrify America, there are at least as many charging terminals. The infrastructure keeps growing. Traveling between large cities, there should be no issues. It's just more cumbersome having accounts with all of them. i4's top charge rate is 200 kilowatts. Find the right commercial charge station and it'll juice from 10 to 80% in about 30 minutes. Most people charge at home, some 80, 85%. In that case, using level two, it'll take about eight hours, essentially overnight. On paper, the numbers seem to favor the higher charge rate of cars like Porsche Taycan, Kia EV6, and this Hyundai Ioniq 5 that are good for speeds around 240 kilowatts. In reality, it's tough to find 350 kilowatt terminals that would make a difference. These that are very popular top out at 150 kilowatts. No matter how fast a car takes on electrons, it depends on the terminal's capability to deliver. And if you seldom travel, charging speeds become less of an issue. Just saying. Okay, question for you. Now that there's no gas engine to make motor sounds, what do you think of the electronic performance tones? Wasn't paying attention, I'm playing Wordle. What? Hey, you're the car guy, I'm the backseat guy. I just wanna be chauffeured around, okay? We have nothing in common except for height. We're both five foot nine. As far as the back seat goes, headroom is okay. Knee, leg, and foot room, ah, that's getting a little tight. And cushions are low, so thigh support is eh. And the door openings, a bit on the small side. At least the door pockets are pretty big. Two seat back pockets, I'm happy about that. Very happy I can charge my phone up and that I have my own climate zone back here. When I think of EVs, I think of flat skateboard designs. This is kind of hefty crowd's foot room. So if you're going to put adults back here, make it two. That way they can enjoy a nice, refreshing beverage. I'm always carrying loads of gear to produce these videos. So kick to open tailgates, very handy. And hatchbacks, hatchbacks rule. There are security shades. As you can see, they're very easily removable, but when they're in place, they keep things out of sight. That's great, just like a regular sedan. There's some storage under the floor, but the travel charge cord doesn't fit here. There's no spare tire. It's a BMW after all, just a repair kit. You'll find a few extra things back here to make life easier. It's a bit of a reach to drop the seats. Small folks will want to go around to the back doors. This is a very useful space to haul larger things, nearly as useful as an SUV. Plus, it's got the 40-20-40 split that I like so much. Seats up, it's not going to have nearly the same cargo room as, say, an X3, because there's just 10 cubic feet to fill. At least the wide opening makes loading stress-free and an easy five packs that borders on six is respectable. The same as a three series sedan or a four series Grand Coupe. In case you're wondering, there is no storage in the nose of any kind. Time to wrap this up with red light, green light. Green light, the i4 M50's dual motor powertrain is wicked quick, a strong argument for going electric over a gas powered M car. It looks and operates like any BMW 3 or 4 series. Love the normalcy. It's got a great interior with high quality materials and that's what you look at the most, right? It has M3 dynamics with a much lower profile visually and audibly. Yellow light, it's an easy to load hatchback, but the cargo area is on the small side and no frunk. The back seat has belts for three. I say stop at two and avoid large adults there. Real world charge speed is good and the EPA rated range is excellent and attainable, but segueing into red light, 
There's a significant efficiency drop when going with the 20-inch wheels and performance tires. Buyers have full control over that. There's no spare tire, and i4 doesn't get run flats. Finally, small stuff like tepid heated seats and the polarizing sport sound. The gas-powered 4 Series lineup has a two-door coupe and convertible to choose from. i4 is strictly a hatchbacky sedan, at least for now. Imagine the dynamic of an open-roofed EV. Could be pretty cool. This is as close as you're going to get to an electrified 3 Series sedan. They couldn't use the i3 name because it was already on that funky little pod. But this has loads of performance. It's fun to drive. The only thing you're giving up is engine sound. Actually, you'll be leaving oil changes, tune-ups, and transmission maintenance behind as well. Theoretically, EVs require much less time in the shop than gas engines. There's a lot to like here. The i4 M50 has loads of BMW performance and refinement without any need to shout about its EV powertrain. That's quiet confidence. I put a lot of miles on this test car. I even took it on a road trip when I traveled to the Mudfest SUV of the Year competition. Even with the reduced range of the performance tires, I had no problems with range. I checked ahead with the hotel, and they had chargers. My electricity was free there. I wish people knew how it all works, that they don't need to be nervous about traveling with just a little bit of planning. Have to believe, as EVs become more popular, friends and family will get the word out. As always, thanks to Martin Campbell and Rob Calero. Uh, this is Rob's car, a 4 Series. You drove the i4, what do you think? Torque is fabulous. Interior great, handling awesome. Would I trade it? I like my manual. Yeah, but the torque is nice. <laughs> Martin disagrees. We all love what we love. Uh, we use Rob's 4 Series for the car-to-car -car shots. I stick a DJI Osmo on the back with a shock mount to smooth things out. So what you may not know is how close I have to drive to Rob's back bumper. Because of the wide-angle nature of the lens, I'm around 5 to 6 feet away from the camera here. Seriously. And I also do a backup with a GoPro. It's even wider. I like good photography. This stuff takes a good amount of time and it doesn't always go smoothly. So I appreciate the effort of the dynamic duo. And then there was this guy who was very happy to keep me company, but dogs and cars don't mix. I have stories. This is the end where I normally give you guys a fun fact, but this time I'm gonna talk about the automobile industry. A lot of people don't understand how global it is. Uh, you know, we're all rooting for Team USA, go team. But, you know, even the big three uh, US automakers, they don't make all of their vehicles in the United States. They're manufactured in Mexico, Canada, South Korea. The Buick Envision is made in China. And Toyota and Honda have huge development and engineering centers in the United States. They build a lot of their vehicles here, along with Nissan, Subaru, Hyundai, Kia, to name a few. BMW has a huge plant in Spartanburg, South Carolina. All of the company's gas-powered SUVs are built there. X3, 4, 5, 6, 7, all of them. And 60% of those are exported outside of the United States. The raw carbon fiber that they use that's in this car it's made 220 miles away from here in Moses Lake, Washington. So yeah, the automotive industry, it's global, gets a little fuzzy. Thanks for watching. Remember, subscribe to this channel. You know, you're still here, so I'm assuming that you enjoy it. Uh, click notifications, uh, follow me on Twitter if Elon Musk hasn't shut it down by now. Uh, and. If you have a question, leave it in the comments. I will try to get to it. But there's so many of you now. Um, you know, I'm getting popular. That's Driven. I'm Tom Volk.